people, you know, the emphasis needs to be on helping people to work out where their boundaries are, work out what feels comfortable and not comfortable, and give them the confidence to speak out when they're not feeling comfortable. That's where we have to focus our energy, not on going, right, here's a line that's, that's not allowed. Because I don't want to live in a world where strangers aren't allowed to talk to each other. And if we're not careful, that's where we're going to end up. Yeah. So then it's about understanding the difference between being respectful and not being respectful. The whole point of saying to somebody, do you want to come back to mine, is basically to ask consent for that next yeah. step. Um, so if you're just walking someone back to your house, you haven't asked consent for that. Mm. And then you're putting them into a situation where they're socially obliged. If, if they're not confident in asserting their boundaries, they, they may feel socially obliged to go with it. Interesting. And, and I think that's, that's conditioned into women. Yeah, and that sort of comes back. I, I think we had this discussion last time we spoke about, you talked about lying in a really interesting way, where there's like two levels of lying. We think about lying on one level as being like, I've got red hair. I don't have red hair. It's a, it's a lie because I've said words that don't reflect reality. But then the second layer, le level of lying is withholding information that might influence another person's opinion to take a different course of action. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if I say, "Hey, come with me. There's a, a water park out there. It's going to be really, really good. Like, you'll love it. Like, I know you'll love it." Mm -hmm. And then I take you out there, but really, I've just gone there to like see a girl that I wanted to, uh, that I wanted to see and been like, hey, "Here's the water park." And maybe I thought you would love the water park, but my intention was to go and see that person. Mm. In that case, I've lied to you on the level that I've withheld information for you from you that might have influenced your decision to come or go. Yes, so that I to manipulate the answer that you wanted. It, so there's lying and there's deceiving. Yeah. Um, so an outright lie is, is different from deceiving, but both are not great, you know? I, I, do you feel like deceiving actually is part of the lie? Because it's like you know a truth that might influence someone to take one decision, but you're not telling them so that they make another decision. Is it? It's pretty close to lying, isn't it? Well, I'd say lying is always deceptive. Mm -hmm. Lying is always deceiving someone, okay. but you can deceive someone without lying. Okay. Um, so to use your example, you've asked me if I want to go to the water park, mm -hmm. and you've given your re I'm giving you're asking me for my consent based on the picture that you're giving me yes. of what's going to happen and your incentives. Mm -hmm. So if I consent on those incentives, then I haven't consented for your true incentive. So you haven't actually got my consent. Yeah. And when we're talking about sex, this is even more important. Yeah. You, haven't, you haven't got her consent to walk back to your house. And maybe you could say, oh, what's the big deal in like walking someone to your house? They can go. But I think because of the way that, that women are conditioned, or ha like not all women, but some women are conditioned, um, we often feel like socially obliged to, to not challenge men. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that women need to work on. You know, this is, all of these problems need to be tackled from both sides. Um, women have got to learn to speak up. And, you know, with all this stuff, all this stuff used to affect me a lot more when I was younger. You know, being harassed on the street, I, I would say, if somebody, if somebody might, you know, come and talk to me on the street and, and walk with me for a bit and I don't really want them to be there. I, when I was younger, I would have felt really socially mm. awkward and I would have felt like I had too much empathy to, to say to him, I don't want you to walk with me. Yeah. And, so, and now I wouldn't. Now I wouldn't at all. Now I realise, actually, I'm, I'm helping him by being direct and honest mm. and giving him truthful feedback about how I feel about that. If, if I go along with it and pretend everything's okay, I'm actually not helping him to understand where boundaries are. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons we're in this mess in the first place yeah. is because women haven't been speaking out. Women haven't been saying, you know, you're making me feel uncomfortable or, well, some women have, but <laughs> I think it's always yeah. you also have to put a caveat in for everything, no, no, don't you? Because it. it's always it. like... Cause, well, I guess you've heard so many, you've heard, you know, so many people in the media and stuff all trying to speak for you and not saying that, saying women don't want this, women want this, and you're just like, no, stop trying to speak for me. So yeah. now you're really careful to say some women, not all women, because it's, yeah. I guess you've experienced that quite a lot. My, my focus is always on understanding that people are individuals and the emphasis needs to be on helping individuals um, work out what's right for yeah. them. So um, 
you know, we, we need to be teaching people how to speak up and people how to listen. Mm -hmm. you know, in the context of this conversation, we're talking about women speaking up and men listening, but obviously it does go both ways. Yeah. And there are obviously um, cases where men are the ones being abused. Yeah. And women manipulating. But we like we got to be honest about like ma the majority of real sexual harassment that's going on is some men to women in general. It's it, 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 it's much more heavy. That's just one of those biological facts that we would just it would be stupid to overlook the fact that it's predominantly a male problem yeah. uh, inflicted upon females. But that's not all men. And yeah. that's uh, And as you said, it's nuanced with the, yeah. the the boundaries of women. So. Because I find this really interesting. Because actually, the, you so often hear it like the as you said, the majority of people in the dating coaching industry would say, "You don't ask a girl, do you want to come back to mine? You just walk with her and assume that you're going to the next place. And if she's cool with that and she doesn't object, then she's fine with it. And that's sort of been normalised. But fundamentally, be beside just not gaining her consent, consent for that next action." It might actually just be teaching guys badly because then it makes them afraid to actually ask the question. As if once they've asked that question, it all dies and the romance is dead. So they, so men never figure out how to just talk to a girl about the idea that they're going to go back and have sex or like go back and do something else. Mm. Do you think that it's actually stilting their education as well in terms of their education and communication if they can't ask the question, do you want to come back to mine? Well, this is why I think it's so important for men to be taught how to listen properly not, and for it not to need to be verbal, actually. Um, women will be showing in their body language what they're comfortable with, what they're not comfortable with. Mm -hmm. If there's any doubt, then of course ask. Yeah. You know, don't assume. It's like you were saying earlier, um, you know, there's, <laughs> if she's not saying no, it doesn't mean that she's saying yes. Mm. Um, so if yes, if it's not, if the question hasn't been asked, you don't know. Yeah, and and it is it is tricky and it is nuanced. You know, I I have had a guy before that I've been dating. He said to me, um, "Can we kiss now?" And for me, that was like, "Oh, <laughs> why have you just asked me that?" Yeah, that's a, um, it's a vibe killer. That one isn't it. It is a vibe killer for me. You know, some people they might feel more comfortable if that happened, or they might find it cute or something like that. For me, yeah, that yeah. was really ruined the moment to the point where I actually then didn't want to. Yeah, yeah. Cause you um, start thinking about the, the gooiness of it, and it's a bit weird, isn't it? Yeah, and I kind of feel there shouldn't be a need to ask if you're acting correctly and if mm -hmm. you're reading correctly. I've never had any problem, actually that's not true, <laughs> I, I have been rape snogged before, what I call rape snogging, rape -snogged. Where, where someone will just like jump in and kiss you regardless. But I think there are so many ways that you can find out if a kiss is okay before you kiss. Even just like leaning in for the kiss slowly, maybe, to allow her <laughs> time to move away if she doesn't want that. to. <laughs> Maybe not that slowly, but there should be a moment where you can read each other and you can make a judgment on does she want me to kiss yeah. her or not without having to say, can I kiss you? If there is any doubt, if you're really unsure, then fine, ask. What do you think, about, okay? what do you think about, I want to kiss you, I really want to kiss you, <laughs> instead of can we kiss? If, if you're with a guy and he just said, I really want to kiss you. Is that more attractive than can, when are we going to kiss or can we kiss? Because he's expressing intent to do that. I'd and say I'd say it's one. more attractive for me personally. It's still not attractive. I don't I don't like old... to talk about things at all, yeah, and this is why it. it's interesting to come and talk about this. Yeah. Because I'm somebody that really doesn't want everything to have to have to be verbalised. Yeah, yeah. Um, some people want everything to be verbalised. That's fine. If that's the world you want to live in, if you want to to get permission and give your consent for every stage of sexual escalation, that's okay, Tell you, you know, partner. but but you need to find the tools to be able to express that and say to somebody, look, you know, in order for me to feel comfortable, I would like you to ask my permission yeah. at, every cent at every step of the way. Fine. Um, for me, I'd rather somebody didn't. Um, so then it is up to them to read me and it is up to me to communicate in other ways. Yeah. I've never had but a problem with it personally. Um, which might be why I'm more blasé about what constitutes harassment for me. Yeah, but, that, but I mean, that comes back to your point that it is different, fundamentally different from everyone based on their biology and based on the way they've been brought up. They're going to have a different gauge of what behaviours make them feel comfortable or uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. 
part of the reason I want to do this video is because I have so many clients saying, like, Sam, I don't feel confident anymore going out and meeting women. With everything that's going on in the media, like, the pressure of going up and talking to someone that you've never met before, when you're naturally a guy that's maybe a little socially not confident, with the added pressure of knowing that the whole country's been exposed to all of this media about sexual harassment and and the problems of men approaching women, essentially, how now can a guy go out and do it with with all of that pressure and all of that weight of, of the problems of sexual harassment whilst also being nervous? Like what, so what can men do to continue to go out and meet people without the fear of disrespecting someone's boundaries or overstepping mm. the mark or, or causing a problem? Yeah, good question. So I, I think the first thing is to not assume where someone's boundaries are. Just be aware that somebody is going to have boundaries mm -hmm. that might not be in line with where you're expecting them to be. Okay. So be aware of that from the beginning. Um, being honest is, is really, really important. Um, being honest about your intentions, um, being honest about, uh, being clear about where you've come from, I think is, is a respectful way of approaching somebody. Then at least they don't know, at least they know that you haven't just been like lurking around or following them. You know, to, to say to somebody, oh, I just noticed you from across the room, that's enough for them to, to understand where you've come from and then, you know, be clear about what, what's made you come over. Um, to give people space, you know, don't invade someone's personal space, don't touch somebody. Um, a lot of pickup techniques will say, oh, touch her as, as quickly as you can. Um, yeah, and I think, again, that that's actually working on making her feel so socially awkward often, um, where you're touching her and then she might not feel comfortable with that, but if she hasn't said, I don't like you touching me, then that's sort of given you a license to carry on touching mm. her. But actually, she might not have been very comfortable with you touching her, but just not said anything. And I think that's often the case, that women don't know how to say, can you not touch me? Yeah. Um, you know, if someone just sort of goes like that or something, they might think, oh, didn't really like that, but it doesn't seem a big enough deal to go, can you not touch me, please? Yeah. Um, so don't assume that someone likes being touched um, when you're strangers. Um, yeah, not trapping somebody. A lot of the pickup techniques also work on, on not allowing somebody to get away. Um, one thing girls will often say if they don't want to be approached or that they don't want to speak to somebody is they'll say, oh, sorry, I've got a boyfriend. And a lot of pickup techniques will, will tell you how to deal with that mm. in a way that will force her to carry on, basically that won't, won't allow that to be a get out for her. Um, it, it's true that it, she might not have a boyfriend, she might just be saying that, but it doesn't matter. I think if, whether she's got a boyfriend or not, if she's saying she's got a boyfriend, it means that she doesn't want to talk to you. Yeah. So respect that, you know, allow no to be an answer. If you can't allow no to be an answer, then you've got issues with rejection mm. and that's your issue that you yeah. need to sort out. Don't force it onto the girl to have to validate you. Yeah, an interesting thing that happens when a girl's like, sorry, I've got to go, or like, sorry, I'm in a rush. And the guy's just like, that's completely cool, have a really nice day. Is that you notice right at the end that there is actually a spark of attraction. Because it's almost like, people don't expect the other person to be so relaxed and sort of, I guess, confident in themselves that when a girl and a guy have a conversation, the girl's like, ah, oh, sorry, I don't really give my number out. And instead of him being like, oh, well, uh, okay, well, just have a nice day. Instead, he's just like, absolutely fine, completely understand, have a great day. And then she's kind of like, oh, fuck, <laughs> you know? Sometimes I notice there's this spark of attraction at the end of an interaction, when it's ended and the guy's been so, like, cool and relaxed about it that she's kind of had a moment of interest in him just because he was so blasé. Mm, well, it's interesting because neediness is like the least attractive thing yeah. in a male. Yeah. So um, when you're sort of expecting somebody to, to be a bit needy and then they're not, it might actually make you more attracted to them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, that could happen. Um, and it just leaves it on a night like that. It's another thing. It's like, I know it's a sort of typical trope, but leaving someone better than... I mean, this is like the pickup artist get out of jail free clause. It's like they can say anything, and as long as they say at the end, like, uh, oh, but I always say, leave the girl better than you, you know, leave her better than you found her. Try and make it happier than it was before you met. Um, but I do think that's important as well. It's like 
if you go in and your con- your intention is constantly like if everyone just leaves a little bit happier than they were before, a little bit more alive and awake than they were before, then that's kind of a positive thing. What do you think about that? Is that something that you kind of encourage guys to think about it as like the altruism side? I know some people are bigger bigger on that than others. Well, I think I think in general we should all be trying to leave everybody better than we left mm. them in all situations. We should always be trying to treat people with respect. Yeah. Um, I, I think we're you know we're all connected and we should all be helping each other to grow. So. You know, maybe you go over to that girl and she pretends she's got a boyfriend and then when you say, oh, okay, that's fine, you know, have a good day, maybe you walk away and she thinks, oh, I wasn't expecting that and mm. that's actually built my trust in men a bit more, that not everyone is True. just trying to get, my pan- get in my pants and force me to have sex with them. Then you've done some good there. Mm-hmm. You've done some good by not forcing it and, allowing her and showing her that not all men are going to be forceful. Um, so you can feel good about that, you know, you, can, you might not have managed to strike up a conversation with somebody that you're interested in, but I wouldn't say that that's a, a negative way yeah. for a, a conversation, for an interaction to end either, you know, not, not needing any specific response from a girl is, is just a really big thing for, for men to learn, I think, yeah. um, to, to open up a possibility for a conversation, but to allow no to be an absolutely acceptable answer yeah and to kind of not take that personally I yeah because well, it's, it's not personal she doesn't, she doesn't know, know you you can read it from the <laughs> same book <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay uh, tangent so where do you see this you know, I mean even industry it's too nuanced to be an industry like you have dating coaches and social skills coaches on one side and you have mm. rampant pick up artists on the other side yes. like I, I know we can't even really call it an industry just because it, that's the, what the media is doing and it, it's a mistake to look at everyone as doing the same thing when you're doing something entirely different to a lot of these characters and that have been picked mm. up by the media but what do you think the future of social skills education looks like specifically in the realm of dating well i hope that social skills will start to be taught at schools but um in terms of dating i think yeah, as you said, the if you're talking about the dating industry, it, it's so complex. You know, like any industry, I, I think it's it's like talking about the dance industry yeah. and including yeah. strippers and ballet dancers mm-hmm. under that one umbrella. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of stuff in this industry that I really agree with, and I think it brings a lot of value to a lot of people's lives. And then there's other parts of this industry that are absolutely horrendous and you know need to be stopped, and and people need to be aware of of what goes on and. This is starting to happen, so I think that this is a, it's a real positive shift that um, attention is starting to be paid and some of this is, stuff is being exposed. Um, it's good that there are consequences to actions, you know, that, that, that it's being taken seriously by the law. Um, but I do think we need to be really careful that it doesn't swing too much the other way and I think that, that that's where we are a little bit in risk at the moment. Um, I don't, did you see that... Um, I watched a, a chat show thing about about six months ago, and Sarah Pascoe said it's absolutely unacceptable for a, a man to approach a woman in a public place. Mm. And you know, I think, well, that's your opinion. Actually, that's that's one perspective out of many possible perspectives. Yeah. It's not my perspective. You know, I one of my I now the person I live You'd with is off the back of I yeah. would be, but um, there's. There is a massive difference between somebody approaching with respect and somebody not approach, approaching yeah. without respect. I, I met that guy in the park. We now live together. He's one of my best friends. Um, I was more than happy to be approached by him mm. because he was respectful. First of all, he asked permission. He asked, can I stroke your dog? And then um, he was polite. He gave me space. Um, I felt at any point I could say, actually, I just want to get back to my book now. Um, but also part of the reason why I am happy with people approaching me whenever I'm happy for anyone to come and talk to me whenever actually I don't really have boundaries around strangers approaching me it's fine but welcome (laughs) (laughs) to but that's because I know I'm able to assert boundaries. I feel confident asserting my boundaries and I no longer feel any um, social obligation to protect somebody else's feelings if I think that they're crossing my boundaries. I think it's more helpful for me to say to them, 
I, I don't want you to follow me you're making me feel uncomfortable than it is for me to sort of allow them to follow me and yeah, you know be polite yeah. and 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 so I think people you know the emphasis needs to be on helping people to work out where their boundaries are work out what feels comfortable and not comfortable and give them the confidence to speak out when they're not feeling comfortable that's where we have to focus our energy not on going right here's a line that's that's not allowed because I don't want to live in a world where strangers aren't allowed to talk to each other and if we're not careful that's where we're going to end up so it needs to be okay what kind of world do we want to live in I think most people would want to live in a world where you're allowed to talk to people so then it's about understanding the difference between being respectful and not being respectful Um, and a lot of that is going to come down to teaching people how to listen properly and understand like honesty and listening yeah are are the two main ingredients